Hello and welcome to MSK Unknown Case 82. Here we have a fantastic case. We have a coronal T1 weighted image through the foot and a corresponding coronal T2 fat side image through the foot. And the high yield question here is, what is the most likely diagnosis? This is a case of acute osteomyelitis, osteoidosteoma, stress injury, or a juxtacortical chondroma. And if we come back here to the images, notice that it's not a case of acute osteomyelitis because first of all, we have a lack of soft tissue findings. There's no subcutaneous edema to suggest cellulitis. There's no myositis or increased signal within the muscle. We just have very faint T1 dark signal on the second metatarsal and marked marrow edema on the T2 with subperiosteal edema on the T2. This is not going to be a case of juxtacortical chondroma, right? Because we don't have a chondroid tumor here. There's no saucerization of the cortex that often occurs in juxtacortical chondroma. And we have no uh, T2 lobulated bright signal that is suggestive of chondroid tumors. And of course, this is not an osteodosteoma or a bone forming tumor, because although those do incite bone marrow edema on T2, there's often cortical thickening or a nidus with central calcification in the cortex in these osteodosteomas that we don't see. But the best answer here is a stress injury to the bone, where you have marrow edema, subperiosteal edema, and only faint changes on T1 in the second metatarsal shaft. So of course here, the best answer is gonna be C, a stress-related injury. And to understand this, we have to understand that there are two types of stress injuries or two types of stress fractures for that matter, right? There are fatigue fractures and insufficiency fractures. Fatigue fractures are abnormal stress applied to normal bone with normal elastic resistance. This typically occurs in athletes, young individuals, typically people that are subjected to chronic repetitive microtrauma, they're running, often and for very long distances, even though they have normal dome, because of the chronic repetitive microtrauma, they injure and fracture their bones. Notice here, the bone cortex is nice and thick. The trabeculae is normal. Contrast that to a insufficiency fracture, normal stress, like instead of running, walking, applied to bone that's osteoporotic, low mineral density, low bone mass, right? Deficient elastic resistance. And notice here, the cortex here is thinner than here. The trabeculae are not as robust as here, and we have a frank fracture in an osteoporotic individual, right? So that's the difference between an insufficiency fracture and a fatigue fracture. Now, stress injury is very complex to understand it. Often, we start with mechanical loading or abnormal forces that are applied to an underlying bone, and that will strain the bone because it's applied to forces that it's not usually subjected to. And then you're going to start to get bone remodeling, right? Bony remodeling. So in a normal state, in someone that's just kind of relaxed, chilling, maybe watching this YouTube video, osteoclasts and osteoblasts are going to be activated, right? So osteoclasts resorb bone. They're cells that resorb bone. Osteoblasts are cells that make bone. And in a normal state, like when you're just sitting down, relaxing, watching this video, osteoclasts are more active than osteoblasts. However, if you have a fracture, then your body's going to recruit osteoblasts to form new bone, to form callus, to heal, and to make new bone formation. And that's known as adaptation. If you give your body enough time and energy to relax, to form that bone. However, if you continue to have continued repetitive microtrauma, you're going to continue to injure that bone, continue to fracture it. You may not recruit as much osteoblasts to fix the bone, and then you may not get adequate healing. But in the normal state, if you have adaptation, you will get healing. You will get normal healing in the bone. Now, microtrabecular injury is a term that's often used, and that just means that there's some injury to the underlying bone. If forces or abnormal forces are applied to the underlying bone, you can contuse the bone. You can actually injure the bone without a discrete fracture, and that's what this is. This red area here represents blood or hemorrhage in the bone. Notice that the bone is not quite fractured, but you've injured the bone. We call that microtrabecular injury. With continued forces, the more forces you apply, you eventually break the bone. And that's going to be a result of a microtrabecular fracture or a discrete fracture in the underlying bone. Now, it's also important to understand that there is a grading system for MRI. You can have a grade one, a grade two, a grade three, or a grade four stress injury. And they are different. Grade one is when you have subperiosteal edema, but no fracture line. So here, this outer area here is the cortex. This inner circle here is the trabecula. Notice this red area represents subperiosteal edema that you would see on a T2-weighted image, but there's no fracture. 
A great two is when you have not only do you have subperiosteal edema, but you have bone marrow edema. This red here is when you have edema within the marrow, but again, no fracture will be seen on the MRI. A grade three is when you have both subperiosteal edema and bone marrow edema on T2 and T1, right? So the T1 weighted image will also show uh, bone marrow edema and subperiosteal edema, and that's depicted here with the uh, lighter shade of red. And of course, a grade four is when you have frank, dark fracture line here. We have break of the cortex and into the marrow space, right? When you have any fracture line, that's automatically a grade four stress injury. Now, clinically, this can present in a variety of ways. You typically get gradual onset of pain in the forefoot. You'll get swelling and tenderness at the fracture site. Uh, pain will often be aggravated by weight bearing. And of course, it'll be alleviated by rest, right? So this is just a classic presentation of a stress injury or a stress fracture. And these are often treated conservatively with rest, ice, uh, protective footwear. If you have a fracture in the foot, as you saw in the index case, uh, pain management with you know Tylenol or NSAIDs and physical therapy, right? And you often, you, to prevent these, you wanna address risk factors. If the patient is a marathon runner, you wanna tell them to chill out, relax, don't run as hard, don't run as much. If they wanna get back into running, you wanna do that gradually. You don't wanna just you know, wait four to six weeks and then just have them run 23 miles in one day, maybe have a graded running so that they don't injure themselves because, you know, that whole cycle of remodeling and adaptation is important and you want to continue to monitor them and make sure that uh, the bone has adequate time to heal. Hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.